Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 16th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. We got an emergency update from Microsoft, and this update does not actually fix a security vulnerability. Instead, it does fix a problem where you're no longer able to authenticate after applying the Microsoft patches from November 9th. This affects you if you're using a single sign-on in Active Directory on-premise or via the Hybrid Azure Active Directory. And if you're not using essentially the latest and greatest version of Windows Server, so Windows Server 2019 and earlier are possibly affected by this uh, bug. If you're infected, you probably know it because users uh, were not able to authenticate. And yes, then please update your systems with this emergency patch. Of course, you may have already backed out of the November 9th update. So if you're brave, then apply that again and then try Microsoft's new update. And talking about Active Directory, uh, one issue that uh, our handler Rob uh, keeps running into is that Microsoft won't allow you to paste a password into the password change uh, GUI. And that, of course, gets in the way of best practices these days. You aren't really able to use any uh, password safes and such uh, for these uh, passwords. So uh, what Rob came up with is a little script that will allow you to copy paste the password and the script will then change it for you within Active Directory. Rob posted two versions of the script, uh, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. The first one is, well, uh, simpler, but it does actually contain the old new password as part of the script. So that, of course, puts it somewhat at risk of uh, losing that script or leaving it uh, sitting on the server. Second script, a little bit more elegant. It will actually prompt you for the old new password, but then allow you to paste the password into the prompt so that way you're able to use most standard password managers and as an added bonus it will actually also clear the clipboard after you're done the risk of copy pasting the password is of course that there is malware that will monitor the clipboard for passwords but the same malware typically would also have privileges to lock keystrokes so no real added risk uh, here by having stronger password and keeping them for a very short time on the clipboard. And going with the theme that there is probably no user configurable page or similar uh, features that aren't being used uh, to either uh, deploy phishing pages or distribute malware, Jihu 360 came across a botnet that apparently uses name silo parked domain pages in order to distribute malware. These pages aren't fully customizable, uh, but you're able uh, to swap out the certain parts of the page. And that's exactly what the malware does here is it uses uh, these uh, user configurable parts of the page in order uh, to offer additional stages of malware to download for its bot. The advantage of this is of course that, well, uh, there are literally millions of these parked pages. They typically all point to a very small number of IP addresses. Following up on an attack like this can be more complex as a result. And often these IP addresses are then not blocked uh, because there are so many different sites, at least parked sites, that are sharing this IP address. An alternative maybe to just block access to these IP addresses and with that block access to parked websites, typically not much good really in allowing access to these sites. I'll leave this up to you and your users if this is an appropriate step to take. And imagine that there is yet another version of the Rowhammer attack. If you don't remember Rowhammer, well, it's a good reminder. Rowhammer 
is an attack against modern memory. In particular, I think original DDR3. This one is focusing on DDR4 memory. And the effect here is that if you continuously and quickly flip bits within memory, you may affect adjacent bits within the same physical memory layout. And that adjacent bit, of course, uh, that adjacent row of bits really, uh, may be part of software running under different privileges, a different user, and it may contain confidential information that you as the user who is doing the bit flipping doesn't have access to. So it's sort of an ultimate hardware level uh, privilege escalation vulnerability has been patched in the past uh, by changing memory layouts, by uh, changing also some of uh, the way how operating systems access memory. But in the end, as this paper does show, it's not fully mitigated and still exploitable. What this really means from the bigger picture is that if you are running software on shared hardware, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to isolate these different processes perfectly from each other. We had all the different CPU flaws that essentially sort of uh, resulted in uh, similar vulnerabilities. And yes, yet again, now Rowhammer with an attack that appears to be very difficult, if not impossible, to fully mitigate. How do you defend against this? Well, either use very old hardware or just don't use shared hardware, which of course would be a strike against using any kind of cloud service. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.